Hello everybody, welcome back to another EDA video. This is the first video in our second unit. And EDA, as a reminder, stands for Exploratory Data Analysis. And up until this point, we haven't done that much exploring of data sets. So in today's video, that's going to be the focus. We're going to explore the Taxis data set. Now, this is a data set that comes with the Python library Seaborn, and typically how you would import it is from Seaborn, but there's a number of things that Seaborn does specifically with missing values that I want to show you how to do by hand first. So for that reason, we're just going to load it as a CSV file. So here in my files, I have the taxis CSV. I'm going to close the user interface just so that we have more space to see the screen, but just know that's all I have uploaded. And yeah, let's get started. So first kind of prompt is saying load the taxis CSV file using the pandas function read CSV and store the resulting data frame with the variable df. So let's do it. I'm going to say, or before I even do that, what should I import? Well, we should import pandas. So I'm going to say import pandas as pd. And then now let's say df equals pd dot read underscore CSV. And again, my file is called taxis dot CSV. So that ran without problem. And now let's begin our exploration. So there's a number of methods and attributes here that we're going to use to get a feel for what the data set looks like. So maybe for you, the taxis data set's completely new. You've never seen it before. Here's how we can get a feel for a data set that we're seeing for the first time. So first thing is the shape attribute. And this works exactly like you would expect uh, from NumPy arrays. I can say df.shape. And what this does is it returns the number of rows and the number of columns. So this is saying we have 6,433 rows and 14 columns. So that's looking good so far. What does the data actually look like? Well, again, there's over 6,000 rows, so we don't want to see it all at once. But if I use the head method, I can specify how many rows I want to see, and it takes it from the top. So I can say df.head. Let's say I want to see the first three rows. So I can see here the first three rows. We have pick up, drop off. These look like dates. Notice it says object. So in this case, it means strings. Then it has number of passengers, distance traveled, fare, so how much it cost, tip, tolls, total, has the color of the taxi, how the passenger paid, pick up zone, drop off zone, and a few other pieces of information. So right off the bat, we can see what kind of data is stored in DF. By default, if I call head without any integer, it's going to uh, return the first five rows. So just to show you, here we get the first five rows. And this is a really good way to get a feel for what the data set kind of looks like, what it contains without having to look at the entire thing all at once. Again, we don't want to look at over, uh, how many rows did it have? Over 6,000 rows. So great. Um, maybe you might complain that uh, this is just the first five rows. So maybe I want to get a random sampling just to kind of see variety in the data. So what sample does is I specify again, how many rows do I want? But then it's going to get a random sample of rows. And the other thing I want you to notice is that this random sample um, usually is out of order. So I can say df.sample. Again, let's start by sampling three rows. And we can see here, so these are out of order. And let's see, it's giving us two rows that kind of are in the 5,000 range and then one in the 1,000 range. And we can see here all the different information. So again, maybe kind of you want a ram random sampling. Um, you know, in some data sets, you might expect certain types of information to be clustered towards the top. Um, so here we can specify how many random samplings do we want. I'm actually not sure if I call it without an integer. I believe it'll sample five randomly. That would be my guess, but let's take a look. Oh, and no, I was wrong. So it's actually just sampling one here. So good to know. Next thing I want to go over is the info method. So let's run it and then I'll talk a little bit about it. So, okay, lots of information here. One thing I want to kind of show you is if you scroll all the way to the bottom, and whoops, I think I'm a, oh, this is a method. So, okay. Yes, the output was looking totally different than I was expecting. Methods we need to pass these parentheses after versus attributes don't have that. So I want to use the method here. So I can scroll down. And what I wanted to first point out is it's telling us how much memory this data frame is taking up. 
This is super important and useful if you're dealing with, let's say, a data set that you found on the internet. Um, so it's kind of good to know well, how much space is it taking up. A couple of other things here, it's telling us the column names and also their index number. So again, we already saw pick up and drop off. Now, something really interesting here is it's telling us how many, whoops, let me get that to go away. It's telling us how many non-null values are in each column. So what's really interesting about this, or kind of what I want to highlight is missing data is a huge issue in uh, data science and kind of how we deal with missing data, how we infer missing values um, is really uh, important. It's gonna be the topic of some of our future videos. But for instance, let's take a look at maybe the payment column. So here it's saying there's 6,389 non-null values. And we're saying here, remember there's 6,433 rows. So one thing that I could do is I could say, well, 6433 minus, and we're looking at the payment column, so 6389. So we can infer from here that there's 44 missing values in the payment column. So again, uh, info kind of gives this quick summary. Maybe another thing to point out is notice it's telling us the data type in each column. Um, object here is going to mean string. We had seen pick up and drop off, so these are dates stored as strings, versus number of passengers is going to be stored as an integer. Things like distance, fare, tip, and tolls are all going to be floating points. A little bit different is the describe method. So again, let's run it and see what it does. So what this does is it returns information about distribution of numbers in our numeric columns. So notice here, passengers, distance, fare, these are numeric columns versus things like the pickup and drop off, drop off dates. So let me kind of make this a little bit larger so we can see. So like I said, let's go to fare. We can see the average fare was about 13 USD. I'm gonna assume USD because I believe the pickup locations were in New York City. And we can see here information about the percentile. So 50th percentile, that's going to give us the median. So we can see the median is $9.5. Great, so again, those were just a couple methods and attributes when you're dealing with a brand new data set just to get a feel for what it's like, kind of some information about it. I'm going to show you kind of one other problem or kind of one question that you might ask about your data and how to answer it. So next part is saying how many different values are in the pickup borough column. First get the pandas series containing the column and then try each of the following methods. So let's do it. Let's first get the pandas series containing this column. And the way we do it is we say df and then we pass the column name. So it's pickup borough. And let's call this ser for series. And if we want, we can take a look at ser. So here it is. And okay, so we've done that. Now we want to try each of the following methods. Let's try unique first. And maybe before we do that, even let me convince you that this really is a series object. So I can say type ser. And we can see here, yep, this is a pandas series. So okay, that's looking good so far. Let's try the unique method. So I can say ser.unique. And what this does is it returns a NumPy array that tells me the distinct values which occur in the series. So we have Manhattan, Queens, the Bronx, and Brooklyn, so boroughs of New York City. Um, but also NAN here stands for not a number. So this is kind of telling us about missing values. So kind of there's rows in our data frame where there is no pickup borough listed. And just to kind of show you, I could do, well, what's the type? Of if I call sir.unique and we can say or see this is a numpy array. Um, so numpy is a dependency of pandas so if you're able to import pandas it means you already have numpy. Um, so yeah maybe one other thing so I said we were also going to do value counts um, or maybe I keep saying kind of, I keep having more things I want to say about this. I think the other thing I want to say about unique first is this is really a series method. Um, what that means is if I try to use it on a data frame, it's not going to work. So just for an example, if I do df.unique, this is going to give me an error. So it's saying data frame object has no attribute unique. Again, 
unique is uh, a method of pandas series. So I can't apply it to data frames, I can apply it to series. All right, and I know the problem says to try it with value counts, so I'll have that be something that you try as well. Otherwise, uh, this is a good place to stop the video. Quick introduction to how we explore a data set for the first time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.